welcome to the aftermarket report with Vegas and Jim and what a great day it was today today's date is June 6 2019 and we're killing it in the option room and we're also killing it on the floor so miss Vegas give us our watch list you know what I actually wish I could give you guys like 10 because there's so many amazing <laughs> calls today and I got to say, these small accounts are growing, and that's what it's all about, is helping people make money. And um, I want to talk to you guys tonight about BYND, LJPC, SNAP, AMD, and Cali from the OTC side. So let's get started and talk about this BYND. So first of all, I want to have a shout out to my dad, because my dad told me about this stock. He's, you know, he told me about this what before it went to IPO and he asked me and I was like, oh, I don't know. I didn't hear anything about this stock. He was live well, heard, um, you know, this is when you should be watching. And, you know, my dad's not a trader at all. So he, I, I thought, okay, let me keep an eye. So when this came out on IPO, it did double and it was in the like $46 range, 47. And I thought, oh my God, it's way over like you know too much forget it and look where it is now like this is insane so beyond meats as you guys know it's the alternative to ground meat and i have not tasted it but i've heard nothing but good things from people that have tasted it and uh they said it's pretty good like you wouldn't be able to tell it apart so apparently earnings per share was in line and revenues were beat so beyond meat uh was running here after hours Went all the way up to uh, 128.09. Uh, did it go all the way up there to 128.09? Hold on. It, I can't. it went up to 25. 125. 125. Sorry. I was looking at my Bollinger Band um, showing me 128.09, but it's actually high high of uh, 125. It's pulled back here at uh, right now live 116.08. Um, you know, people have to take profits. I mean, it's had a crazy, crazy run, and those after hour traders. They were on it because it was so heavily shorted. And um, I'd like to hear, Jim, your thoughts on this chart because, you know, people are going to be watching this again tomorrow. Well, I definitely have to give you a lot of thumbs up on on your charting aspects today. Thing run up and she had a target to 115 on this trade. And then she spit it out 125. And I'm just going, you, you're incredible. It hit a 125 high, and it's pulled back now to the 34 EMA on a daily one minute. So we're going to look at the uh, one year first. You know it hasn't been out this long. It's a new IPO. It opened up at around $45, and it's really been a great momentum play. It's environmentally friendly. You know, uh, I think that's a, a one of the big reasons why it, it, it that's why I hear in a way from um, the fat cats at Wall Street. You know, and, and the, the food's great, and this is what we've got right now for for the uh, chart since it's opened up. We're going to go back here to the 20-day and look at it a little bit closer. It did kind of pull back today. Vegas mentioned that people were trying to short it because they didn't know if the earnings would be that good on it. But actually, it did have a very nice breakout. It did pull back to support of 94.66, almost hit that 200-day on a 20-minute one hour chart and you can see we were in a little upward ascending triangle chatter uh, channel right here where the lows were right down here at this low support of 8817 and then we got your second support here at 9466 and then it kind of hit support today at 9449 and hovered on that at the bottom then in the close it dipped on down and ran back up to that support level so we're gonna pull this up to one day one minute and I'm going to magnify this up a little bit and I'm going to draw a pullback support right now I'm seeing at 115.78 and I'm seeing another one right down here at 111 I wouldn't be surprised if this does pull back it is overextended it has a beautiful run from the low down here of 94.12 all the way to 125 125 dollars so now it's in correction mode. It's pulled back to the 34 and balancing off the 34 EMA. I switched over my moving averages to the 34 right now. And I uh, pull the playback, the pullbacks on the 200 and also carry the 9 EMA when I'm day trading. But I really like the 34 
and the 200 right now. It's really working well for me on pullbacks, and that's the way I play stocks. So these are going to be your support levels. We're going to at least see if it can go down to 107.78 with a low of 104.05, and with a second port support channel here between 109.40, 111.86. And I'm going to call resistance here, which is now support at 115.78. So if it pulls back or if it runs up, the resistances are going to be 118.72 right there. And we're going to try to break that high of right around 124.42 with a pivot point in that channel right here at 120.22. But we're overextended right now. It's running on momentum. I do believe it will pull back to this lower support at 107.78 and start to create a new channel and we're going to be watching this closely every day and the next one we're going to talk about is going to be LJPC which was another fantastic play and sorry to all the shorts out there some got a little bit of money out of it but others got stuck Miss Vegas yeah LJPC well well, LJPC, so I got to admit, like, I called this trade today in the room, and, um, you know, I, at the time when I called this trade idea, um, I actually didn't even know there was news. I actually saw this pop, and I said, you know, this is not really, I mean, it had some volume, but it wasn't really running, and I said, I, you know, I like this chart, actually. I'm going to call this trade, and I gave some resistance points on it. And um, let me just take a look here really quick on this uh, LJPC because I want to tell you where I did alert it. And you know what? If you follow me on Stock Twits or Twitter, um, on our Twitter account for I Love Stocks, I mean, I did actually post this in real time. So no doubt about it. Um, but anyways, on this talk, stock here, and I gave so many updates on it and people thanking me. Um, and also collaborating with Jim because he was helping me as well with the charts um, and creating all the support and resistance lines. But, you know, I actually didn't realize that there was news on it. And I did give the idea when it got to $6.70. And I said, you know, here's some targets like 7, 7.23, 7.40, I was not expecting this to honestly rip the way that it did. And my gosh, did it ever. And then Jim's like, well, Vegas, you know, you didn't see the news on there. I'm like, oh, my God, there's news, even bonus. Like, why didn't this run even soon? So, you know, this company is in uh, San Diego, and they're into um, commercializing and development of, obviously, some innovative therapies. And um, they did have news, and they did give an update on the treatment with the LJPC, their 401. And what they basically said was that, it resulted in a statistically significant, and this is important, that word, we always talk about this we word. We love that word. A, yeah, and a significant reduction in change in transference saturation, by the way, like that's so scientific. Um, so you, you'd need to be a scientist. But basically what they're trying to say is that um, the readout from the all the clinical testing that's been done is extremely encouraging and um, the clinical research at the New York Cancer and Blood Specialist, um, Mr. Jeff Vasirka, um, he did mention that there has been no new treatment uh, introduced for patients that have hereditary hemochromatosis in more than a decade. Um, and so in light of the negative impact that repeated uh, phlebotomy procedures on patients' quality of life, um, patients would welcome a pharmacologic treatment that they can actually self-administer. And this would actually address the underlying pathophysiology um, of the disease. So you know what, this is so interesting. So this is really a treatment. This is for hereditary hemochromatosis, okay? So there's approximately uh, 60 patients were getting weekly injections of this uh, for a period of 16 weeks. And so this was basically the results of that study. So um, this is really great news, and uh, hopefully we'll see uh, more about it. So, hey, good news and good, good information. The other thing, too, is waiting to get this approval with the European Union. So I think that we'll see more of this action on this stock probably at a later time. But I'm going to turn it over to Jim because, I mean, this has had such a beautiful run. I mean, I really wasn't expecting it to go the way it did, but my God, we enjoyed that big time and this like did so well 
So, Jim, let's hear about that LJPC chart, please. And, you know, there's one thing that I do like <clears throat> when I'm following a stock and I see that significant, that word significant, that is really a big catalyst for me to keep a good eye on the stock. It's, it's just a word, but when it's thrown in, it just makes it more of a bullish uh, indicator for me. So here we are. We had a, a pennant or a more or less an ascending. Right now we close with an ascending pattern with a high of right around the 1097. And we did call this in the room 1097 resistance. And Miss Vegas, I said, you know, we were down here, I think around 1046. And I said, I wouldn't be surprised if this thing jumped up another dollar. So Miss Vegas said, yeah, 10, 1146 sounds good. So here we are after hours, we hit that 1148. And I was just, you know, it just sounds so cool when she said that. And I had a target of 1192 for my next resistance. But what we have right now is we had a nice little breakout on this trade and the volume just kept going in. Uh, the float was right around 25 million, 25 and a half million. And I don't know how far we reached on that. Uh, let me see here. I want to look at the float, see how much the volume on this thing was today. We hit 24 million, so we almost hit the rotation on this trade here today. And that's, but that's a lot of lot of volume. 24 million, 20 almost 25 million. But I was calling this like a babe today. I mean, I was really telling the room, once we break this 769, if we could break this 769, we would have a real nice run on this trade. And that's where my target was when we were down here lower. I said, this ain't going to probably pull back and then it's going to bounce up. And if we get a double top, we're going to have a double top. And then we had a triple top breakout. And once we hit that triple top breakout, it went ahead and ran on up and just wouldn't stop. And the pullback that I was counting on or the resistance level was around 968 and we did hit that and that was a good counter for a pullback trend line and there was a couple times in this trade that I thought was real fancy and let me show you where they were I'm gonna magnify this up a little bit whoa maybe a little too much right there hmm there we go we did follow a trend line up here, and once it broke that trend line, it pulled back and hit that 34 EMA, which I call out. And then I created another trend line from that pullback, and it pulled back again. It ran all the way up and hit that 1097. Actually made a high and broke to 11. It had a high of right around 1126. And then it pulled back to that trend line again that I created from these two other, other pullbacks. And we hit right here, then I was calling this 986. A support level for the rest of the day and as you see it did pull back again to a lower support and I shouted out to the room I said you know what one of the guys a uh, market shift I had two people call out support levels one was at 968 and we hit that and then later on it pulled on back and it hit that 935 which he mentioned and that was just kind of how our team works in the room we, we work together we try to help each other out and then she went ahead and had a double top up here, back up here to the $11 again. And all this time, I'm playing it off this 34 and I'm playing it off the 200 So later in the day, we hit that 200 And this is where I was calling it later in the day off that, well, that ain't going to work. You can see we hit three times off this 200 And I was posting this in stock twits. And... So every time it pulled back to that 200, it bounced back up and hit that resistance of right around 1146. That was the main resistance we had to break today. And then right into after hours, we pulled back to that 200 again. We hit that thing three times, and then bam, it ran all the way up to our 1146 that we called out in the room. So here after hours right now, we pulled back again to that 200. And this is how important this 200 EMA is to me. On these breakout stocks, when they pull back, they create a good support level. And I have this on a one-minute daily chart. So let's call this out again tomorrow. Let's keep the momentum. The shorts got hurt, got beat up today with it. I think it could probably, it's Friday. It might pull back and consolidate. Or it could run up and break the new high. And I'm going to set that resistance level right here at 1130. And the pullback supports are going to be right here at nine, that 925 area the 968 for the second support 
and the 986 for the first. And I'll also be playing them off these 34 and the 200 EMA. And the resistances will be on above that. And I'd like that 1046. And then we got to break the 11 bucks. If we break the 11 bucks, we got 1130 is going to be the hard one to break. And that's LJPC and great job to the room. And I called this trade out most of the day. I kept my eye on it and didn't take it off. The next one we're going to talk about is snap right to it, Miss Vegas. Yeah, so I just want to mention Snap. I mean, Snap is an active uh, swing trade. Uh, we've been actively calling this trade in the room daily when it's warranted or uh, alerting it um, in the option land because we've been trading the $13 calls, $13.50 calls, $14 calls. I mean, we've been rolling this up. And uh, Snap is one to keep a watch on either as a swing trade, day trade, option trade. I mean, you should be watching this. Uh, actual stock um the other thing too that i that i like about this is um the fact that the company does not have earnings for a long time so we have a lot of cushion ahead of us um on this on this actual stock and uh, we should hopefully see a lot more activity uh on the stock i mean it did break the 14 today uh there's definitely room for this to still have a continuation and uh, there's quite a few reasons that we can that I like it. I mean, it's in a consolidation. Um, this, you know, definitely when a stock breaks out like this, this stock becomes a top leader. Definitely, like I said, no earnings for quite some time. And you know what? It just got to, you know, it's following the channel. So, um, you know, the volume's there. It's, it's ready to break out. Um, it went all the way to the 14. I actually looking for this to go to 16 next. Um, and then I'll turn it over to Jim and you can tell us what you think. Uh, I'd want to make a shout out to John, uh, modified Darvaz box. Uh, he did some very good analysis on this and shared it. And I appreciate his, um, commentary that he gives, but Hey, you know what? Let's hear about the chart, Jim. Cause I'm liking it. I'm liking it too. we got a, a, a cup and handle here or a bowl is what I call it. But, but you see, we had a year high. Back here at thirteen at fourteen forty seven, and I'm calling maybe a little place right around this fourteen oh six. I've been watching this as last year's trend lines, all these dark yellow ones. The blue ones are this year's, and we've kept an eye on this from since it was down here right around the eight dollar levels when I really started paying attention to it again after we had that big gap up. And this is snap and so this is the year chart. You can see the big bowl we got here, big cup and handle, where we're starting to break past that label. And we're moving on up to the double top of a year high. So we're at a double top area right now, and we did kind of hit that today at 1406 area. And I'm going to pull up the 20-day now and get a better look at this. I also wanted to pull back that year. I want to show you something on the year. When I'm talking about the EMAs, we did have a pullback to the 200 right here at the EMA. Then we had the crossover, and then she kind of got consolidated. And if I remember right, they were picking on this stock just a little bit ago and downgraded it, and it went right back down to that $10 level, right down here to the 200, and then it's bounced back up and been stronger ever since. Sometimes I think these downgrades are just uh, uh, in, uh, ways of getting the fat cats into some of these trades so they can get in it at a cheaper price so let's pull it up to the 20 day right now we've been bullish on this ever since it was down here at 995 under 10 bucks on the 20 day chart and today we hit the 1413 high i do have had a real hard resistance breakout here at 1230 and we've done that in the past three days so that's going to be your low support right now i'm going to call that old resistance a new support Kind of give it a little equilibrium down here at around 11.53 if it decides to pull back. But for right now, 12.31. The next support is going to be right here at 12.76. And I could adjust that just a little bit down to 12.67. So that's going to be your little pivot point area. And your first support is going to be at 13.28. I do think this got a little overextended today. And it could pull back to that 13.28. And then we got to break the resistance level. And I'm going to adjust this 1406 to thir right under 14, 1398. So that's going to be my resistance I got to break. Other people 
like to break it out of the wick, but I use the base of the candle because I like to buy and sell into strength. So if it pulls back, we're going to look at the daily now, what happened today. The daily one minute is what I do to trade. It also had a double bottom down here at 1267. Remember, that's the support level that I'm calling right now. And we're going to add a new trend line to this right here at 1312. That's going to be your second support channel between 1312 and 1328. And then we're going to have add another one right here for your first support right here at 1379. That's where we are right after hours today. We did have a golden cross off the off the thir off the 34 over the 200. Once that happened, we did have the breakout. And this was a beautiful call by Miss Vegas today. I think we also picked this up. I think it also come up on the uh, trade exchange. Uh, George might have mentioned it to us too, which he's a which one? A snap. That? Yeah. Uh, I think George mentioned it. I don't remember. Oh, you know what? Um, I think he did mention um, unusual volumes. Yes, yep. and yep. Uh, they gave us the ones for August two thousand nineteen. So yeah, yep. So looking good. There we are on that. We're going to have a support level again. I'll name it off one more time. 1267 to 1276. The pivot point or the second support is going to be 1312 to 1328. And your first support is right now here. at Scanner finally went off. Let me mute this thing real fast. It's been stuck. Trade ideas. Okay. So that's it. Let me say it one more time because I was interrupted by Stella. Oh my God, how many times? 1267 to 1276, 1312 to 1328. First support's at 1379. And with resistance, we got a break, is at 1406. And the next one we're going to talk about is going to be AMD. Oh my God. So let's just get to the point on AMD because I want to just get you guys going here. So. With AMD, um, you know what? Morgan Stanley threw in the towel. Ha! Apparently, they made a wrong bearish call. Can you believe this? Um, analysts still think investors are optimistic, but they're struggling to find negative catalysts. So we've talked about AMD, and AMD had a nice run. By the way, it did get an upgrade from yours truly, Morgan Stanley, Mr. Joseph Moore. He upgraded the stock after long doubting the chip company. And as a result of that upgrade, the stock went up even more. We've actually been looking, you know, trading this longer term. We did say that I uh, looking for this to go to 31, 33, and then down the road, longer term. If you like longer term holds, do your due diligence. You know, we're not licensed advisors, so speak to a professional. But um, you know what? Looking for this down the road, 40s and 50s. Now, the thing is with AMD, got to mention this, okay? So people, there's still some short-term optimism is what they were saying on one of the reports. Um, you know, it is still looking to develop, don't forget, the fastest computer in the world. That's oh, what yeah. they're looking for. Um, you know, cloud gaming, don't forget, could be a really big catalyst for AMDs, what they were mentioning in this report, which was mentioned, by the way, by Moore, the gentleman from Morgan Stanley, that gave this an upgrade. And by the way, this is what I want you to keep in mind when you're thinking about the stock and when you're thinking, hmm, I wonder if I should get this longer term. Uh, you know what? Do your own due diligence. But I do want to quote that the analyst from Morgan Stanley did say that he does expect down the road, doesn't know when, he does expect this. And this is what intrigues me about the stock. This is why I like it. Um, he expects the company to announce a partnership, get ready for this, with Microsoft. Um, so... That's, again, what he expects. This could be, like I said, a cloud gaming catalyst. And uh, this could potentially could happen. I'm not making any of this up. There's an article that's come out here. I'm reading specifically from this article. So basically, the bottom line is that due to a combination of the way that AMD implements virtualization, uh, NVIDIA's desire to pursue higher margin on GeForce, you know, this makes an interesting position for AMD especially if they will benefit from the cloud-based gaming initiatives, which, by the way, are starting to take off, is also what he did mention. Um, and they're very, they're less concerned, by the way, about their competitors. They don't care. Like, um, so anyways, uh, please keep that in mind. 
uh, AMD could also be on a path to sustained profits is what he also did mention. Um, the company recently made announcements about their PC business that sent shares soaring. And uh, obviously, I think AMD has gained an edge over Intel and process technology and performance. So um, out of a whole bunch of analysts out there, uh, 14 have a buy, 16 have a hold, and only four said that they have a sell. Um, so we'll see. But the analysts uh, did raise the targets as well. So we'll see what AMD has in store in the future. So interesting information and uh, not to be shocked. So, uh, Jim, let's hear about the AMD chart, please. Oh, yes. AMD, you know, we talked about this in our aftermarket report, the last one we did. And I said one of my biggest catalysts was uh, for AMD was the deal that they made with Apple, too. So that, to me, was a new catalyst to start bringing this up higher. And we're going to be looking at the one year. And they were right. They tried to call this back to 17 bucks. I said, no way, no way, no way, no way. We did pull back to around 25, though, on that on that pullback, and that was right around this 26.30, 26.40 area. And here for the last week and a half to two weeks, we did have a nice little breakout to these new highs. We are going to see a double top on this trade, and that's going to be right here at 33.18. It did have a 34.14 high, but we are on our way up to that new new uh, new resistance. And when we get that double top. I think there's no issue about this going to $40, none at all. So I'm going to bring this to the 20 day real fast. And the pullback right now we're going to be looking at is going to be right here around 3040. And I did call a new channel on this at 2950. I think it can pull back to that 2950. And even called it a little bit, I think even 28. But after today's action, I think this low support right now is going to be 2950. And that's where we're going to kind of probably balance out at and the pivot point area is going to be right here in the 30 40 to 30 78 with a new resistance breakout of 31 48 and I did call that 31 48 that we were going to hit it in the aftermarket report up to this new resistance of 32 57 so this is AMD this is one of our bullish stocks of the year we called this thing down at ten dollars and we're up 200 percent on 300 percent on this from 10 and it ran all the way to 34. We finally hit the maker when we hit the $30 mark. Miss Vegas was solid about that. She said it was going to go there again. It did. And here in the last two days, we broke out and we're starting to create new resistances. And the pullbacks again are going to be right here at 29.50. The pivot point's going to be between 30.40 and 30.78 with a new resistance channel of 31.48 to 32.57 with a long target of $40 and that's AMD and good call and good way to stick with it Miss Vegas and we're going to bring Oh up yeah, you know what? We made we made good money on this today. Honestly, options, we right? made like over 100% in options. Yep. We were on it. Yeah. <laughs> so this is a very bullish we were, stock. We heard as soon as we heard about the upgrade, I mean, thanks again to my team at Trade Exchange. Um, you know, we were on this this morning. First thing we got, we're like, okay, let's get these option calls. That was our top option call uh, that we took this morning because we knew the upgrade came in and we were like, let's grab this. So we grabbed the 2950 calls and we also, because, you know, the close was 2950. So we grabbed those ones because we were not even in the church, like in the money. And we grabbed also the um, thirty dollar calls, and look, we're doing very well. I mean, look at these AMD option calls. And by the way, these are ones that expire uh, tomorrow because we wanted to just day trade these, and um, you know, not necessarily keep them into next week. But we're probably going to roll these up. So let me tell you about the AMD call. I mean, if you actually look at quickly, um, and this is important, and I, I, it's, it's not about bragging, by the way. Um, not here to brag because you know what? It doesn't matter. Like anyone can make money. It's again, it's not your money at the end of the day. It's theirs. But why I want to mention AMD and, and talk about options very, very quickly. I really, I mean, I'm really passionate about really trying to help people with a smaller account. And it's really hard sometimes, like I said, to, do, to make that kind of money in the stock market. And, uh, you know, with AMD in particular, um, we gave the calls on this today and we actually alerted uh, specifically, we gave the alert for the, um, uh, we have the $30 strike, which expires tomorrow. And those ones, um, let me see what they were at. They were $0.45. Cents. 
And uh, if you go to the $30 strike on AMD at 45 cents, okay, those went all the way to $200 each. So if you would have put in even like a small account, you know, $45, I don't have a lot of money. I'm only going to buy one contract. So you would have bought it at $45. It did open at 40 cents. So, you know, eventually it did move uh, pretty quickly, but you know, you would have put in $45 and can you, and, I mean, it's such a, I mean, that is a great trade. I mean, it went all the way to $2. Okay. That particular contract now that expires tomorrow. So some people sold it already and they took their profits. You know, they sold, some people sold it at 150 because they're like, holy crap, I made over a hundred bucks on this on a $45 investment. I'm out. And they took their profits and that's okay. There's nothing wrong with taking profits. Okay. Um, but some people liked the option call. What they did is they actually bought two contracts. So they sold one, which gave them basically um, the money back for the money that they put in to buy two contracts, plus plus, they made a little bit of profit. And then they kept the other contract to basically ride it into tomorrow. So it's almost like riding a free share. So a great, great example on how options can help. Um, the other one that I just want to throw in quickly that we did really well too. I mean, we were quite bullish before on Tesla as well. And we had the, we had the one for 20250 on, on that one, which expires actually tomorrow. And uh, those ones were a dollar 60. And do you know that, sorry, 167. And it wasn't called today. That was called on Tuesday. Okay. We alerted that one Tuesday. So, so people bought one contract because again, it was a risky trade and $167 investment. Do you know that that contract went to nine seventy nine today? Nine hundred and seventy nine dollars for one. I mean, obviously, we're not going to be holding till it goes all the way there. But I mean, even if you would have bought one contract, a one hundred and sixty seven dollar investment, I'm sure when it doubles, like to three twenty four hundred bucks, you're selling. Like you got to take the profit. So I mean, again, it just goes to show you that a small account can really grow. So you know, again, you're welcome to come by in the room, come check it out. And uh, hopefully you'll be happy coming here and you'll learn and you'll do well. So don't be shy to come by. Uh, and last but not least, I want to talk about Cali. So, you know, Cali is an OTC stock and uh, they had very good news. And um, you know what? They talked about what's happening with their cannabis mobile product. And by the way, I believe there'll be hype on the stock next week because next Tuesday, they're going to be presenting at a company in New York. And uh, they have a contract, by the way, with a company in New York for the New York state licensed hemp cultivation. And they apparently are going to be talking about how this mobile cannabis uh, extraction capacity can be utilized to expand into a more than a $20 million contract. I mean, I don't know the details about this mobile thing, but I would like to know about um, how it's going to work. And uh, I guess they're going to talk more about it. So, Jim, let's hear about Cali and what's going on because uh, I think the stock's pulled back here and uh, we'd like to hear about it. Now, I also want to mention Cali did partner, member with Pura, P-U-R-A. This is all OTC stocks. And uh, let's hear, Jim, on the Cali chart because it's a dirt cheap price right now. Yep. I've been very bullish on this trade for almost a half a year now, ever since they legalized marijuana in Canada. And we did have a nice little breakout on this at the end of the last year, where it ran down here from 0 0.003 all the way up to 0 0.0393, and we've had a pullback. And then in between that pullback, we had a couple of nice little breakouts. And then it was brought to my attention that the thing was selling off this, la this week. And one of the ladies, Michelle, in our room said, Jim, it's pulling back. Can you tell me where a good support level is on this trade? And I'm very bullish on this. All this company does is get good news constantly on a consistent basis. So it did pull back to a previous high we had down here. I told her 0 0.0072 would be a good entry on this trade. And if we did not pull right back to that number, we did for two days in a row, it pulled back to this 0 0.72 area. And I was telling another guy, novice in our room, you know, this is time to load up. So... And both of, all three of us have been on this trade real strongly for ever since then. I'm going to pull up the 20-day chart. You can see the pullback that happened here back on Monday when it pulled back to 7. And I called this out. I think it was coming down. It was right around 8, 7 when she pointed it out to me. 
I told her to hold on, wait for that 7-2, try to get in at the 7-2 area. She did get in, and, and so did, did Novice, and then it's ran back up to which I was calling a support level here at the point zero one, and I'll show you on the yearly chart here real fast why I called that point zero one a strong support, because for like three or four months it would pull back to that area and bounce up. I do have a resistance level on this chart from here on out, the support level from now on is going to be this .01. I'm going to bring up the 20 day one more time. I'm just going to look for a low support just in case it happens. It'll be right here at the .86. I don't know if I don't think it'll get back down there, but it's a strong buy at .01. We got a .013 for your next resistance, .0153, and then the .17, which I would be going long on. We are in an ascending pattern right now with a breakout signal to break out past this point zero one two four, maybe a little bit lower, right around the one, right around the twelve area, point zero one two. So keep this one in in watch. I mean, this is a wonderful penny stock to play. It has great news constantly, and with this new contract and the expansion of what's going on with all the new laws, Cali is going to be one you want to keep your eye on for small. Uh, OTC play. And that concludes our aftermarket report. I have to give kudos to Miss Vegas on BYND for calling that 115. She's really been fine tuning the options room. We also do have, we, we all hang out together on the main chat floor. So you're welcome to join us. You sign up by going to our website right here. We do have the link to the chat room. Sign up, follow the, 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 uh, rules to get in and we also do have a Twitter page which if you would would you please sign up and follow us on Twitter if you don't want to join the room you can get some of our alerts here plus we also have the uh, um, links to our Twitter account and we have links to our stock twits account we have links to Facebook and this is the aftermarket report and I'm going to give Vegas will probably have something to say here in the close. And also subscribe to our YouTube channel and ring that bell. Ms. Vegas. Yeah. Uh, I just want to say thanks, everyone, for listening. It's a bit a little lengthy, but, you know, we like to give details sometimes because it helps you understand why the stock is running, why you should consider keeping a watch on it. Um, you know, it's not just to ramble because we have nothing else to do and or make a video extra long. It's just to explain details because not everyone likes to do a lot of reading like I do. Uh, but so that's why you have the video audio so that you can listen to the commentary. And on that note, I also want to say congrats to the Toronto Raptors. Uh, they won last night against the Warriors. But, you know, I do want to say one thing. You know, the Warriors are really classy, you know. Uh, one of the players, uh, you know, he was uh, trying to save the ball and he actually fell on top of some of the people sitting there in the audience. And one of the people that he fell on is a billionaire investor and he's invested uh, and he's on the board of the Warriors. And guess what? He has been suspended from attending the rest of the NBA playoff games. And I got to say that decision came from the Warriors themselves. And you know what? Uh, even though they're competing against Toronto, I got to say they're a classy team to make that decision. Um, it just shows sportsmanship and um, that, you know what, they don't care if you're a billionaire, you act inappropriate, you're out of here. And you know what, that is really a true sportsmanship act on their part. And I think that's first class. So I just wanted to say shout out to the Warriors and good luck Raptors. And uh, may the best team obviously win. Go Raptors, go. <laughs> so on that note, have a great night, everyone. And Jim, anything else you want to add? I just want to say every day is International Women's Day. We do have a sign up here for the ladies that can get a free month if they join the room. And this is, the, right. after, this is the aftermarket report with Vegas and Jim. Today's date's June 6, 2019. And we love stocks. Thank you.